Welcome to my lecture. Today we are going to discuss about how to use Mohr circle to determine the principal stresses that means the maximum normal stress and minimum normal stress acting in a given element and their corresponding orientation. Also we are going to calculate the maximum shear stress which is acting in the given element. Okay. So this is the given element. Here we have two normal stresses one is along x phase that is 8 mega pascal and another one is along y phase that is 12 mega pascal and this 12 mega pascal is a tensile one and this 8 mega pascal is compressive one and we have a shear stress which is 6 mega pascal now let us see some basics about drawing more circle the first thing is about the sign convention the normal stress if it is tensile in nature that means they are providing tension in the given element they are considered as positive in our case this normal stress that is 12 mega pascal is considered as positive because this create tension in the element and the stresses which are creating compression are considered as negative in our case along x phase we have a 8 mega pascal and which is moving inside this element so it creates a compression in the given element so we are considering this as a negative as far as shear stresses is concerned the clockwise rotation is considered as positive so we have to take each phase for finding whether the shear stress is creating clockwise rotation or counterclockwise rotation say for example our case in the x phase we have these two shear stress okay so these two shear stress create a clockwise rotation so we need to consider this shear stresses as positive along the x phase on the other hand the counterclockwise rotation has to be considered as negative in our given problem so these two shear stresses acting in the y phase creates a counterclockwise rotation so we need to consider that as negative okay so this is all about the sign convention so we need to remember these key points while constructing more circle as far as taking sign of normal and shear stress is concerned okay so here this is the x phase and this is the y phase and now we are going to find out three points to construct the Mohr circle okay in which two points are going to be located on the Mohr circle and one is center okay as far as Mohr circle is concerned along horizontal axis we are going to consider normal stress and along vertical axis we are going to consider the shear stress so one component must be normal stress and another component is shear stress so on x phase we are going to calculate one point so this is the x phase point a in which first one is normal stress that is minus 8 mega pascal because it is in compression so we need to consider that as a negative and we have a shear stress that is 6 mega pascal the shear stresses on x and y phases have same magnitudes so that we have 6 mega pascal shear stress on both x and y phases okay and this creates a clockwise rotation as we discussed earlier because these two shear stresses causes clockwise rotation on the element so we need to consider this 6 as positive okay now we have taken the point a on x phase of the given element and on the y phase we have a normal stress 12 which is positive in nature because it is creating tension in the element so it is 12 and this shear stress which is acting in the y phase creates a counterclockwise rotation here you see that this shear stress is acting this direction and this shear stress is acting in the opposite direction both creates a counterclockwise rotation so we need to consider this as negative okay so now we have seen how to find out these two 
points that is a and b on x and y phase so now we are going to find out the center of the mohr circle okay it can be found by calculating sigma average value okay so we have two normal stresses we are going to calculate the average of these two stresses okay so the sigma average is minus 8 plus 12 divided by 2 so this value is 2 so the center of the mohr circle is 2 comma 0 because this component that is the shear stress component must be 0 as far as the center of the mohr circle is concerned so only we need to find out the this normal stress component as far as the shear stress component is concerned it is 0 okay now let us see how to draw the mohr circle we have calculated these three different points a and b on the mohr circle and the center of the mohr circle now let us see how to construct the mohr circle okay so first we need to draw these axis as i told you the horizontal axis represent the normal stress and this vertical axis represent the shear stress the scale to draw the mohr circle is taken based on the points that what we have found okay based on that we have consider the scale to draw the mohr circle here we have considered 1 centimeter as 2 megapascal in both normal as well as in shear stress axis now let us mark this first point that is a minus 8 comma 6 so on normal stress we have minus 8 and on shear stress we have 6 so this point represents the point a okay so minus 8 comma 6 now let us mark the point b which is 12 on normal stress axis and minus 6 on shear stress axis so this is the point b okay so now we have located these two points which are going to be on the mohr circle now let us see how to mark the point c this is the center of the mohr circle here is the point that is 2 comma 0 which is the center of the circle now let us connect these three points together okay so this line connects a and b through c so in this line the point a c represents the radius of the circle similarly the distance c b represents the radius of the mohr circle now by taking c as center and c as radius we are going to draw the mohr circle okay so this is the mohr circle so the point in mohr circle represents the corresponding normal as well as shear stress first let us find out the radius of the circle okay so for that we are going to use the pythagoras theorem so this triangle which is shown in blue color is used to find out the radius of this mohr circle so the radius of the mohr circle is root of this distance square plus this distance square so this distance we need to find out because it is here we have 8 and here we have 2 so 8 plus 2 the whole square and this distance is 6 6 square so the radius of the mohr circle is 11.66 okay the radius of the mohr circle also represents the maximum shear stress okay so now let us see how we just say that this radius is equal to the tau max so in order to find out the tau max we are going to draw a vertical line from point c because this line also represents the radius of the circle okay so this corresponding point on this vertical shear stress axis represents the maximum shear stress so obviously the radius of the circle is equal to tau max now we have calculated what is the maximum shear stress value that is 11.66 mega 
Pascal. Okay. Now let us see how to find out the principal stresses. That means maximum normal stress and minimum normal stress acting in the given element. So this circle represents the entire stress distribution of the element. So in which the maximum normal stress and minimum normal stress is going to be formed by finding the intersecting point of the circle on this horizontal normal stress axis. So this point where it intersect the horizontal axis as well as this point where it intersects the horizontal axis represents the principal stress value because these value are supposed to be maximum and minimum normal stress. Okay. So here this point the intersection point is going to be minimum normal stress and this point is considered as the maximum normal stress. So now let us see how to find out these two value. Okay. So first sigma minimum value is equal to this distance from 0 to this distance and this value is going to be radius minus center because the whole distance is radius. So by subtracting this center value that is 2 from the radius we can calculate the minimum normal stress. Sigma minimum is equal to 11.66 minus 2 which is equal to 9.66 mega Pascal. And on this side we have maximum normal stress. How to find out that one? So here also this distance represents the radius of the circle and this distance is center. So by adding these two value we can find out the maximum normal stress acting in the given element. So sigma max is equal to r plus c. So 11.66 plus 2 which is equal to 13.66 mega Pascal. Now we have calculated the principal stresses that is minimum and maximum normal stress acting in the given element. Now let us see how to find out their orientation because uh, it is the given element position. If you rotate this position AB in the counterclockwise direction then we will get this line horizontal line. So that there only we got that principal stress value. So how much angle we have to rotate in the Mohr circle is represented as 2 theta p because in Mohr circle this angle is represented as 2 theta p. In actual element it is represented as theta p. Okay. In Mohr circle we need to notate this as 2 theta p. So this angle can be easily found because we know the radius value as well as this height value. So sin 2 theta p is equal to opposite side by hypotenuse. So opposite side is 6 and this hypotenuse side represents the radius. So we have already calculated the radius value. So 2 theta p value is sin inverse of 6 divided by 11.66. So this angle is found as 30.96 degree. Okay. In more circle we need to rotate 30.96 degree in the counterclockwise direction so as to get the principal plane. So to reach this point we need to rotate the given element to this much angular distance that is 30.96 degree to get minimum and maximum normal stresses. So now we are going to find out the orientation of the principal plane in the given element. Okay. In more circle this 2 theta p is 30.96 degree in the counterclockwise direction and the principal plane x dash is located at an angular distance of 15.48 degree because it is theta p in the same direction that is in the counterclockwise direction as that of the one we found in the Mohr circle. So this is the given element. Okay, So it is going to be rotated in the counterclockwise direction with an angular distance of 15.48 degree from this horizontal axis. And now the maximum and minimum normal stresses are represented in the rotated element. Okay, So this is the orientation of the principal plane. Okay, So this one is 9.66 mega Pascal compression and this one is 13.66 mega Pascal which is tension which we have calculated earlier. Okay, So the principal stresses are minimum 
normal stress is minus 9.66 mega pascal and maximum normal stress is 13.66 mega pascal and the theta p value is 15.48 degree so this is the orientation of that principal plane that is x dash y dash okay. that's all about this problem I want you to do an exercise problem which is shown here. So it is very similar to that of one we have solved just now. But the direction of the normal stresses and shear stresses gets changed in this exercise problem. The normal stress along X phase is tensile here. So it has to be considered as positive. And the normal stress along the Y phase is compressive so we need to consider that as negative one and the shear stress along x phase creates a counterclockwise rotation so it has to be considered as negative and the shear stress along y phase creates a clockwise rotation so it has to be considered as positive so if you want more idea about Bohr circle you need to do this practice so that you can get a clear cut idea about drawing more circle the solutions for this exercise problem is provided in the description box so that you can verify whether what you have done is correct or not. If you have any clarification, you can ask questions in the comment section. I am ready to help you. Thank you for watching.